Today we have the NVIDIA Shields review. Now this has been the most requested review I've had in recent months, so I'm very excited to get a um, full kit here to review the 500 gigabyte edition with the game controller, the separately sold uh, remote, and the stand that goes with it. So we're going to do a little unboxing now. I'll show you everything that comes in these boxes with the devices. And then I'll test it out for a while and come back and do a full review. Well, let's start with the actual NVIDIA Shield. Now, this is the 500 gig version, but they come with other versions also. So you can get smaller, cheaper editions. Uh, but if you're a gamer, the more space you have, the easier it will be to actually um, download games and install them. So right here is the actual device. A lot of protective covers on this, so let's peel off a few of those. It looks nice. It's um, smaller than most DVD players, a lot bigger than other uh, set-top boxes like the Roku or the Fire TV. But when you have a lot more power, a 500 gigabyte hard drive in here, you expect it to be noticeably bigger. But it's attractive to the eye. It's very nice looking. It's a lot smaller than a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One which is nice too if you're looking for space. Let's look at what's on the back here. So you have a uh, HDMI, um, Ethernet out, micro USB, two USB ports, um, micro SD card there, and it's very nice. So uh, overall, I'm very impressed with it. Vent on the side, um, with the increased horsepower, everything you would expect that right there. Let's pop this open, see what we got inside. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the controller. Now, standard comes is a game controller with the device. Uh, if you want the remote, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit, it is sold separately. But I think most people who are going to buy a Shield are going to buy it with the intention of using the gaming on it. And this is nice that they include it. Where with the Fire TV and the Apple TV, it's extra to get the gaming controller. Uh, so now I've peeled off all those little add-ons. Here it is. Um, so you can get it and um, with just the gaming controller and watch all your movies, um, have everything there function perfectly w without the need of a regular remote that they do sell. But it's nice if you do want that separate remote. So a few things here is a micro USB charging, probably use your standard cell phone charger on there. Headphone, headset jack right there. Uh, for gaming, it's really nice. Um, you know, I'm a big gamer. I've been primarily a PlayStation gamer uh, since PlayStation 1. You know, go back to original NES, um, Atari 2600, all that. But, you know, the remote feels good. The button layouts feel very comfortable. Um, feels well made, heavy duty plastic. Looks like a volume down there. So, overall, I'm happy with it. Couple play pause, I'm assuming that is right up here. We'll test that out when I'm actually playing around with the system. But overall, I'm impressed with it. It feels good in the hands, it doesn't feel overly heavy. And the layout feels easy for gaming. All right, um, up next, HDMI. Feels like a good quality HDMI cable. And then the power block. There we go. Peel off the plastic on this. Uh, pretty universal adapter here. Depending on where country you order this in, you'll get a adapter that fits wherever you live. Uh, pretty standard nowadays. Not too big of a box in the end, which is nice. Sometimes you get those big honking boxes with devices like this that you can't plug anything next to it in on the power strip. So it's nice to see they didn't go that route. Um, so here, micro USB cable to charge the remote. And a quick start guide and a support guide. So it's nice. Let's take a look at this real quick. Yeah, pretty basic instructions on how to install it and set it up. Um, nice pictures to follow. So ship this to your grandma. Um, and it, they should be able to quickly understand how to set it up with their TV. That's always my test with these devices. Can grandma understand how to do this? Let's go next over to the remote. Cut the little plastic off here. Check out what we get with a remote purchase. Here we go. Here is the standard remote. Again, let's take off the plastic. There we go. Voice control button. Um, rewind, a couple different buttons on it. Very basic, very uh, Apple TV, Fire TV-esque look. Simple interface there. Again, headphone jack, micro USB cable right there to charge it with. 
Um, so that's nice to see what comes in the, the device box here. All right. So again, quick start manual, support guide, another micro USB cable to charge it so you can charge both your, rem your remote and your game controller. So that's a nice addition right there. And then one last thing here to review, the stand. Similar, this kind of reminds me of the PlayStation 2 a little bit. Um, they had the big fat ones that were designed to sit laying flat like this, but then you could buy a stand to stand them up. And that was a pretty popular selling item. So if you like to have a vertical um, stand there so you could save space on your living room, or you just like the way it looks that way, don't want to have, or fits in your entertainment system better that way, it's a nice option. So there we go. All right, I got this open. Let's see everything that comes with the stand. So right here is the box of the stand. And that appears to be it. Now, this actually feels like metal. A very nice quality feel to it. Let's see here. Yep. There you go. So nice stand, nice device right here. Um, very, very well built. Um, good construction quality. Nice um, rubbery mat on the bottom for non-slip moving around. There is plastic, there we go. You see now, now that I've removed that plastic, this thing sits here like a rock. It's actually moving my little review table around when I try to move that. So if you want something that will stay put when you put it there, well, look at that, it's almost sticky um, on this laminate countertop here. So if you want something you feel safe with it sitting vertically next to your TV where it won't fall over and break your brand new expensive Nvidia Shield, then the official stand is highly recommended. Metal, heavy, well-made, well-recommended. So it comes with a ton of stuff. All the cables you like, HDMI cables. You know, some boxes, you got to buy extra packages to get an HDMI cable. This one comes with it, which is a nice plus. Well, I'm going to test this out. Um, this just kind of shows you everything that comes with this big device. And overall, I'm pretty impressed with the quality of the build, the quality of the controllers, and even the quality of the cables feels good. Nice, thick rubber. Feels like the connections are well made. Well, I'll come right back and give you a full review of how it played out. Well, I've been testing out the NVIDIA Shield now for a while. I've been very impressed. Very smooth, easy to use device with probably the fastest media player I've ever tested. I don't say that lightly, it is fast. Um, but it's also a great gaming device. Now I've tested out with Android games like Grand Theft Auto and NBA Jam, as well as Shield Hub games that I've streamed and downloaded. Both of them work very well. The Android games um, automatically map their controls to your uh, Shield game controller, and it works smoothly and seamlessly. Um, the stream games are surprisingly great. I was a little skeptical of streaming games over the internet, um, but it works. Ultimate Street Fighter, MX versus ATV are both games to spend a lot of time playing. But there's a quite a nice selection here to stream also. Um, then there's the downloaded games for purchase. You know, Half-Life 2, Doom 3, Crossy Roads are in there. But it also has newer games coming out, like the new Metal Gear game will be included. Metal Gear Rising will be available on the NVIDIA Shield. And other new games are available as well. So, gaming, excellent, good selection, very powerful. The game controller works very well for that. The only kind of negative thing a little bit to say, it's just kind of a weird one, the top row here on the home screen is suggestions. It seems to be based less off of what you've actually been watching and more off of what apps you have installed or what you used. You know, I use Crackle and show me a Crackle movie. Never watched that show before. Um, a very popular YouTube video kind of brings up what's popular on YouTube at the moment. You know, I don't really watch The Voice. I don't think I've ever watched a YouTube video about The Voice, but there it is. And then, you know, Google Play videos here are included, uh, more YouTube, and so forth. You know, a lot of Hulu stuff here. You know, don't watch MasterChef, but it's there. Now, I've only been using it for about three days now. So maybe if I continue to test this out, use it more, it would learn more of the shows I've watched and play them or display better recommendations. They're not bad recommendations. It just, it's just a weird way to do it. And that, but with that being the only negative thing to say, 
that's pretty impressive. Well, let's kind of test out Netflix and different features here. Um, kind of give you an idea of the speed. Now let's go into one I haven't watched yet. Let's kind of randomly select, here we go. Um, American Dad, and I'm in. Very quick, easy. Um, let's back out here, go to Family Guy. You see very quick there. It tries to predict what shows you've watched in the past and loads them quickly. You see it works very, very quickly Bring it up. Let's go to Arrested Development. Can't remember the last time I did it. Let's do select from the beginning. And there I am. I'm already in it, even though I told it to select from the beginning. Um, let's go here. Let's go with something I completely have never watched. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Never watched this show. And there you go. We're already playing it. Just probably one of the fastest streaming I've ever done. Now you may think, oh, well, that's Netflix. Maybe the other um, networks don't or apps don't work that well. Let's go into Sesame Street. Uh, Dara loves this. There you go. You're already playing it. Um, Family Guy. Let's play an episode of Family Guy. See, I'm already playing the episode. And one more, Bar Rescue. Let's resume an episode of Bar Rescue. So not only did it play quickly, you know, it didn't even need to be an episode I was just on. So overall, the power of this device is phenomenal. Uh, very, very impressed with the quality of this um, hardware, the quality of the software to play, and any complaints are minor um, little ones. Uh, but overall, works great. Uh, down at the bottom, you have your typical settings. Uh, but it's nice that they leave network out because that's probably the one you're going to use the most. You know, if you move, change your Wi-Fi settings, password, whatever, accessories, power on and off. It's nice to have that right there. Um, and then you got your apps row. Now, apps will automatically rearrange based off of what you've used. So, in theory, the apps you use the most often will be at the front. And the apps you use least will go towards the end. Um, you use the Google Play Store to add more apps. It works very well. And Plex does come pre-installed on all Shields. So I've been impressed. I'm very pleased with the Shield. Uh, the gaming is excellent. The streaming is phenomenal on it. And it is a worthy contender for all current and announced players on the market. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment or visit us at cordcuttersnews.com. Once again, that's cordcuttersnews.com. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great reviews. Thank you for watching this video.